Okay, so I've got my building starting to come along and so I'm going to try and put some windows in there, which I was saying before, we haven't really worked out the precise sizes for, but we've got a pretty good idea from the reference planes I've set out here. Uh, I could definitely start placing some windows. And then the uh, one of the great advantages with Revit is the ability to adjust families and other properties as well after you've created them. And so in AutoCAD, it would be a really silly thing to draw in your windows and copy them throughout a big building like this before you knew the size. You could maybe make a block and even a dynamic block if you wanted to and, uh, and that might uh, allow you to do it. But even then I think it's um, getting ahead of yourself to do that. And uh, you'd know if the size changes, you'd have to go and redraw a lot of the things you've done in AutoCAD. But with Revit, you can uh, use families which have parameters that you can adjust. So the width and the height at least should be adjustable in this window. And so I'll show you the photo. Okay, so really what we need to make for this window is the, um, well, all of the elements you can see in that window frame and the window generally. Uh, so it's basically a double hung, well a double, double hung window. So we've got two lights or two windows or two lots of sashes for that double uh, hung part. I'm sure you all know what a double hung window is. There's another name. People have been using another name for them I've been hearing lately. And uh, horizontal slider or something crazy, but anyhow, double hung is the proper name for them. And uh, it's aluminium though, not, not timber, so most double hung windows would be probably timber, but this one's really aluminium. And then it's got another light above, or a sometimes called a fan light, uh, but uh, you'd probably just call that an extra. Uh, yeah, yeah, fixed uh, fan light, or yeah, top, yeah, you could say. Yes, oh yeah, they are definitely fixed, yeah. Fan light, yeah, is the top. Yeah, just the upper upper windows is the fan light, but that's more in a, in a door, especially they call it the fan light. Uh, that's right, it can be yeah. Yeah. That's right, they are exactly. So, uh, so if you look in the library, you'll find there are windows exactly like this, but we've got some that are similar. We can use as a starting point. Uh, so I'll just go to open that and in Revit you can uh, open any file just going to open and to go to the library on the left you can use the shortcut to go to then uh, windows and you have a whole series of double hung windows and the closest I think is this uh, two light uh, you've got with the one with the two lights and then the fixed panes below but uh, that's not going to help me much so I'll just use the two light double hung and so we've got uh, the uh, sash or the two sash um, configuration on the left and then a fixed panel on the right which we'll need to adjust so I'll start by just deleting uh, the glass there because I'll need to redo it and even the glazing bars oh you can modify all of them basically. So the ones that maybe won't let you modify them at first are the locked ones and you'll see when you select something all the locks that apply to it come up when you when you select it. Uh, and you can unlock them though uh, really easily. So um, this though uh, even though it's uh, just a line is locked you can see in a few locations but luckily I'm just going to delete that as well. And so then I'm going to have a look at the uh, the parameters for this family and that's in family types. Okay, so on the ribbon, whenever you are working in a family, uh, you'll see that little properties panel come up and you can see it comes up on most of these panels. Well, not most, but a few of them. Uh, sorry, the, f the first one and the last one. Create and modify. But it still is a very commonly used panel, that properties panel. Uh, you've got family types there where you can see all the parameters and have a look at any sizes that have been set up. So if you're wondering what a type is, it's a size in this case for the window. So we can set up a bunch of parameters or properties here and save that as a new size. So that's a really important dialog box. And then above that you have family category and parameters, which actually has a few pretty important parameters down the bottom. 
that sometimes people are unaware of, like this option always vertical can uh, catch you out sometimes. Uh, and then the category. Now, just to give you a tip, you can't always change the category of a family after it's been made, but in most cases you can. So people sometimes think the category is a fixed thing, so if something's set as a window, you can't load it as a door, but you usually can change it to a door category if you want to. And that's a really useful thing to know. But I will go back to the one below, family types, and just give you an idea how these parameters work. With the, uh, the width there, well we can actually put in the width that we um, can see this window is. So it's, uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, yeah, about 9 courses across. Minus, yep, that's right. So, okay, so 9 by uh, 240, so 2160 across by... Well, let's put that one in first before I forget it. So the width there, uh, 2160. And if I click OK, it'll make that change. But I'm going to hit Apply. And that way it'll make the change without closing the dialog box. If you've ever wondered what the difference between Apply and OK is, that's it. It just applies the change straight away rather than waiting for you to click OK. And so then the height... Again, I know I've counted this before. <laughs> I've... Uh, Got that in another file, so 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 12, 13. Yep, spot on. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've got some over there. Yeah, thanks. Yep. So it was 26, wasn't it? 29. 29, thanks for that. Yep. 29 by blue 86 to get it as accurate as possible. So 2490, I'd say. Uh, well, it might work better with uh, other things. Now, let, okay, let's do 25 for now, and if we need to rough, uh, round it off later, also make it more accurate later. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's easier. So again, apply, and you can see then it's stretching this sash all the way to the top of that um, opening. So the first thing we need to do is have that transom uh, put in and then tie the sash to that. So you've got, uh, if I go and have a look at the elevation there on the placement side, uh, let's have a look at the back as well. And you can see there the um, dimensions. You've got to have a look in uh, a few different views sometimes to find the way the family's been made. Someone else has made this and they've decided where to draw the dimensions. Okay, so I see. So you've, you've looked around and, 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 and so it's not in that, so you've yep. got another one of them down there all up there. Yeah. Okay. I'm so what to look like for that. Yeah, yeah, you've got to experiment. And uh, so they've got some dimensions drawn in the plan here as well. Uh, but then also if you go into the left and the right elevations, sometimes they'll have things there, but usually something like a window, it's going to be on the, the front or the back view because that's showing you most of the window. Uh, and so in this case, it's the back. Usually they do it on the placement side, but it all depends on the person who made it. Uh, so a little thing I can do here is just bring that wall up because it's too low now for the window size I'm working with now. So I'm just going to change the unconnected height there to 7,000. to give me plenty of room to work. And then the opening is set to the uh, the height. So if I can find it, I'm just going to use tab. And, ah, oh, sorry, no, it's avoid extrusion. Okay, so there, as I'm pressing tab, I can see the elements in the family. So it's telling me down on the bottom left, that's a, a sweep. And then now, if I click to select, it's going to select the void, and uh, I'll, just to show you, go to Edit Extrusion, and, ah, oh, they've actually drawn it in another view, that's fine, it's going to uh, show me the views that this can be shown in, left or right, are oh, fine, and so there you can see the thing that makes the hole in the wall. Okay, so the person who made this window has decided to use a void, 
Uh, another option in a window, I'll finish that, is to use uh, what's called an opening. And that's actually the more common approach. That's what I was looking for before. I had a look in a few of the double hung windows before and they all used openings, but it's okay to use a void. So it's uh, often the first thing you want to look for is something like a window or a door, so you know how the hole in the, um, in the wall is being made. And so it's tied to this reference plane. And that reference plane, you can see here on the, uh, sorry, on the back, is dimensioned using this height measurement. And so you've got to work those things out before you go and try to modify. Also the, uh, well let's see, the reference plane there is visible. I'll just see if the other one, that no, hasn't been hidden. The, uh, this one here, yeah, uh, you're just using the equals over here. And so this is something you just have to do when you get a family made by someone else. You've really got to have a good look at it and work out how they've done it. Uh, and so, like I said, I want to bring the, the frame down, essentially for the transom. So I'm going to select that, uh, that piece there, the reveal. And you can see from the option you get, it's been made as a sweep. So I'm going to go to Edit Sweep. And then there's my path. And so it's going around that opening. And I'll go to uh, then Sketch Path. And so now I'm going to draw a reference plane, I think, and take that across. Okay, so this is the part where I'll need to make a, um, well, I'll just need to make a dimension at first, actually. I was thinking a parameter, but no, I'll just do a dimension. And so I'm going to dimension from this reference plane to... Ah, now I don't have my other reference plane here. Okay, so the person who made this family has been a bit <laughs> slack and they haven't put the... Uh, yeah, I was a bit worried about that. So look, I'll just do it myself. You would have seen on the left... Oh, sorry, the right elevation. Well, you can't even see it here. But when you see the, um, the void... Oh, there we are, the head. Okay, so that head there, that head reference plane. I don't know why it isn't coming up in the, uh, the other view. It's a bit annoying. Oh, no, it is okay. It's just very small. So they've stretched it. Okay, so they've been really again, strange the way some people make things. Okay, so it is there. And I'm just going to try to um, either maximise it so when you right click you can maximise 3D extents and no it's still not coming up there no I think the easiest thing might be to draw a new one so I'll do that and I'm tempted to switch to another family but we'll see how we go so I'll just draw this reference plane in and ok so left to right and when I then draw in a that dimension there I could use but I'll just draw in a new dimension. And so notice there, I'm dimensioning from the reference level, which is the base level in a family. It's just like your bottom level or ground floor level. And then I'm going to uh, choose the reference plane, place it to one side, and then if I select it, from the label here, I can choose that, uh, that height dimension. So they've got one for default head height. I think that's a bit silly. Uh, if I set it to height though, oh that's the height of the window, okay, so this actually go to default head height. When you see that default option, it means that it's a, um, it's an instance parameter, so, yeah, again, and they've got the height there independent of that. So, to tell whether it's instance or um, or type, if you select the parameter, you can go to modify and you'll see there you've got the, t the option there for type or instance, which will probably be clearer when I show you this family in the project, but you do need to be aware whether you're working with a type or an, a, an instance parameter.
And don't worry, if you've still got clear what, what parameters are or how you work with them, I'm going to make some in a moment. Uh, so, well, I'll make one right away, actually. So I'm going to go and create another reference plane going across underneath my um, reference plane for the head. And it doesn't hurt to name your reference planes if you have a good name for them, so I'll call this transom. Okay, so this is for that bar going across. And I suppose I'll use it as the bottom of that. Yep, so... Okay, so now, to tie that with a uh, parameter, I can draw a dimension. I'll just, uh, it's best to use align dimensions, so I'll just use that. Select this reference plane, which is set, remember, to the height, and then I'll choose the one I've made for the transom. Again, place it to one side. Then just got to cancel, and come back and select that dimension. And then you can go to Label. So Label's an option that comes up for dimensions when you create them in a family. Uh, and then you can choose Add Parameter to create your own. So that's how you make a dimensional parameter. And you'll see then again, we've got that same dialog box I've been showing you. Uh, I'll call this uh, transom. Just better spell it right. Transom height. Uh, it'll be a type parameter. And it's good not to change this. If, if you're not sure what to do there, so but, but know what it is. So here it's on dimensions and that's correct. So I'll uh, click OK. And now you can see that value's gone in with a name. And so this is something you can't do with a dimension unless it has a parameter. Normally to change that dimension, you would select the reference plane and then you can change this over here. But when it's got a parameter associated with it, you don't have to do that. You can select the dimension and do something that normally in a project you can't do. You can click on the dimension and change it that way. It's all to do with the way dimension uh, parameters are set up. And so, let's count some bricks again. So one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. Let's say eight's close enough. Okay, so eight by 86. So 688, let's say 700. Okay, so we know it's the height from here to here, not the height from uh, the bottom. So you can also change it in family types. There's my transom height parameter. You can change it there to 700. Hit apply, and we can see the reference plane moving. So now I've got to get that sash to follow it. So I can start by trying this uh, equals measurement and taking that middle um, grip there for the witness line down to my reference plane and then setting it to equals again. So already the middle of the sash is following my new transom height. So that's good if it works. Uh, following on from that, I can go back to that sweep now. And uh, actually that probably gives you a good pointer for making uh, or working in families. You can make the reference plane within the solid, like I was going to before, but it's usually better to make it outside of the solid, like I have now, so that it's available for other things than the solid you're working on. And so in other words, if I'd gone to this sweep, edit sweep, and then sketch path, and drawn my reference plane in there, it would have only been useful with this solid, and I couldn't have used it for other things, which um, means I'd have to go and do it again. So here, this reference plane can be used now by using a line. I can select the reference plane and then I can choose the top of that path. It'll tell me that the constraints aren't satisfied because it was locked to the top there. So I'm going to remove that constraint. And now I'll lock it to my reference plane, which is adding in a new constraint. Tick to finish. Tick to finish again. And there we are. Now the reveal's following the um, my transom, and then I can select the uh, sash frame, and oh, no, I better do the 2D parts first, so this here is a, oh no, sorry, that's an extra part of the, uh, the, the frame, so that's, they've done the jam with the reveal and, um, and the rest of the jam there, which is the right way to do it, I don't normally go that far, but that's, how, that's good if they do it, so again, edit sweep, and uh, sketch path, and then 
a line again, choose... Uh, now here, you could pick this edge, but it's going to give you the sweep. You might think, well, that's the same thing because it's in the same place as the reference plane, but it's still better to choose the reference plane. So think of the reference plane as like the controller object, uh, and this line here is being controlled by that. So if you use this now to line up with this new edge, you're creating a dependency built on another dependency, which is more work for Revit and gives you more chance of a, a problem. So uh, again, try and always choose the same reference objects, in this case their reference plane, and then again I get the same message, not a problem, remove constraints and lock it again. Tick to finish, and tick to finish. Okay, so <laughs> it's got a bit crazy. Uh, the top's been okay, but it's got issues now with the other parts. And that's a common thing you'll see. So again, I've just got to fix that now by going edit sweep, sketch path, and tie these other sides back to what they should be associated with. So it's good practice. Align again. There's no reference plane here, unfortunately, because of the way they've made this family, which I don't agree with, but we can work with. Um, and ah, that's a bit painful. So we've got no... Oh, yes, we do, sorry. There it is. So there's a reference plane that I can use. And then the line, again, same message, remove, lock again, not a problem. So it's a bit of detective work when you're trying to modify someone else's family. But it's still easier than, than making it, again, from scratch yourself. Okay, so tick to finish, and there we are. So it's looking pretty good, actually. So luckily... The window sash was already set to follow the reveal, so I didn't have to change that. And that's something you'll come across often when you're again working and changing other people's families. Uh, so now I've got the two sash elements, which you'd think I'd just be able to copy over, and and we'd be done. Unfortunately, it's not quite that simple. So I'll uh, I'll do it. I'm going to copy over those two sash frames using the copy tool and ah, so I better try and get the glass as well I suppose so if you remember selecting right to left is a crossing window which will select everything it touches so that'll get the two sashes the two panes of glass the glazing beads and the chevrons the arrows and then using copy regular copy tool not copy to clipboard I can snap to you know my base point somewhere like that and then snap to the corner something like this and you may be thinking we're halfway there because we've got the two sashes done but I'll show you now in 3D what's going to happen if I leave it like that and just model in the fixed panes by flexing it and that's something again you need to always try with families that are adjustable so the width just as an example I'll try 3000 apply and oh it's worked okay so that's good I thought it would uh, not automatically um, be tied on the sides and you can check that and just like, do what I did before align again to line it up but fortunately it's uh, behaving itself and and has automatically so yeah yeah it carried the parameters across which is beautiful when it works uh, Revit's not always that reliable so you've got to check this but it's uh, it's great when it works Great, and so then I'll try the height. Brilliant. Okay, so that's easy. And uh, it was 2,500 before, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay, so that makes life a lot easier. And then, <coughs> back in the... Uh, sorry, the uh, back elevation, we've got the... Uh, the sweep for the reveal. So I'm going to try and make something very similar to this for the um, uh, the fixed light panel frames, I suppose. Uh, so to find out how this has been made, again, I'll go to Edit Sweep, and then this time select Profile. And I can't see the profile very clearly here because that uh, plane that it's been drawn on is perpendicular to my view. I'll go into a 3D view. 
let's see if we can see it there. There it is. And it's been done with a sketch. Okay, so to investigate the sketch, you can use Edit Profile. And, ah, do you know what to do when you see this? A couple of options. It's a big blob of ink. Think of it as your, it's your line weight. So the line weights are very heavy. So? Thin line, yeah, thin line. So just like AutoCAD, you can turn the line weights off using thin lines. And that's really good to know, because that'll get you out of trouble no matter what. But then another good option with a view like this, or a family like this, it's a small thing. So it probably shouldn't be at 1 to 100 anyway. Uh, it'd definitely show up better at maybe 1 to 10 or 1 to 20. And that way you can leave the line weights on and, uh, and still see things when you zoom in on small things. But the thin lines option probably is the essential one that you know that, how to turn the line weights off completely when you need to. So I need to know how big this rectangle is. It's 130 across by, by 20. And it'd be nice if we could see, yeah, it's right on the, no, it's not on the center, sorry. So I've got to have a look in the left elevation. And yeah, we can see there it's 10 mil from the uh, from the centre. Yeah, oh, how big? Just how big it is, so I can draw the same thing uh, in a moment when I make my own slate. Mm -hmm. So I just want it to look the same. It's also so it's 130 by 20, and then uh, they've got dimensions in here they've used actually to ah well. So that's an interesting one. They've got it projecting. Ours doesn't. Definitely is recessed. So I might just change that. I'm going to check, get this dimension. And, uh, oh, now, sorry. Do I get the line, I mean? And drag that over, which will change the dimension. Okay, so again, it'll tell me about the constraints. Not a problem. Remove constraints. And then, well, I don't mind it being 25, actually. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So I'll lock it at that. Doesn't need to be exactly as it was. So then now it's 90 across, 10 mil from the centre, and 20 mil. So that's even easier to remember. So tick to finish, and finish again, and now you can see the reveal has changed. And I will go back to the back elevation and uh, make my own. So back to create, and then you've got sweep. And uh, I'll just go straight to sketch path and pick lines and I'm going to turn the lock option on. Okay, so with lock anything you pick is automatically going to have the line locked to it, which is what you're seeing when you see those padlocks come up. So I'm picking the reference plane notice because again I'm trying to keep it all tied to the same elements. So here again, I'll try and find these reference planes and the other one there. So I've got the four sides of my path. It doesn't matter that they're not joined together because I can simply use trim now and tie all those together. Even though the line no longer is over that reference plane, it'll still follow it. Okay, so this path for the sweep is fully aligned or fully locked to the edges. So tick to finish. And now I have to go into my uh, left or right side. I think it was the uh, yeah the right side that I was looking in before. Uh, and so then to work with the profile, it's odd. Even if you haven't created the profile yet, it's still edit profile you use to to uh, sketch your profile. It's on this option here by sketch. And so now again with edit profile. Uh, luckily I've got that one there to drive, so I don't even really need to think too hard about this. So just with a line across. Uh, yeah, now look, you might be tempted to lock the, uh, the lines here, but you don't have to. Uh, it'll know to follow the path. So coming up 20. And again, it's really one of those things you've got to try to see all the little quirks and you know, inconsistencies in the way that you associate dimensions with things. So here the one I really need is the aligned dimension going from the 
wall face so here if you're drawing in a line dimension and it doesn't snap to the right thing remember you've got the option there to set it to wall faces instead of wall center lines front of the building to the reveal there it needs to be 25 and that's got to be locked that has to be done because the wall thickness is going to change so that needs to be able to go with that uh, and then the dimension again needs a cross needs to be given so I've got to get there again notice how it's trying to find the solid behind I don't want that so I'm going to use tab to get the line in my profile okay so again just lock that one and that's the reveal done I'll accept it a category so I'll finish it finish it again and why doesn't it like my swing ok let's have a look at that ok so I might have over constrained it I'll just select that edit profile and I'll get rid of this one and let's try finishing that again oh no sorry that was just me ok so my uh, gizmo is up here I didn't look for that I just assumed it was down the bottom so you should always look for that when you're making a sweep the profile needs to sit on that, on that uh, gizmo uh, I'll just draw it again doesn't hurt to see, see that so notice if you lose the edit profile button you just need to click select profile to get it back and yeah I've got to draw all of that again well I don't have to but I will uh, so again pick lines to get what I can notice locks turned off here and then I will draw the last line which is 20 mil below I'm doing it in a different way to what I did before just to show you some other ways of drawing things ok so there's my 20 by 80 uh, sorry 20 by 90 um, rectangle and then again we just need those dimensions going across and I don't know why I haven't been doing them as one dimension it's much easier lock and lock and this time it better work it's not a difficult sweep so it's embarrassing that it didn't work the first time but there we are so ok so I've got my transom and now again this is what you do in real life when you make these things you go and test that bit so you go into your family types and you try out some different sizes to see if it's going to work when this changes so 3500 I'll try again for the height apply yep it's fine so what about 1500 yep to find out actually there's something oh yeah that's okay oh yeah yep so oh well, yeah the sill height's a separate thing uh, so again 2500 and if I zoom out it should be clearer so I'll just see what this is that looks a bit strange oh no it's just my view angle so that made it look unusual uh, so yeah I'll just do it with it zoomed out and again so the height was okay the width 2500 again and that's working and uh, 1500 and back to 2160 uh, so the uh, the mullion should be able to just attach now to that reveal even though actually sorry they've done it to the um, to the, the sash bar so maybe we'll do it to that okay, so we've got here the uh, ah so that's solid above what's going on there they've made this in a different way ah ok so that's an interesting one it looks like that reveals that that piece isn't working properly but it's actually coming all the way out and that's why the yeah why the window went a bit strange before you can see when I hover over it that that piece is stretching all the way out and it's because the profile is uh, attached to the wrong thing so I better fix that again with uh, edit sweep so you can see there that's the profile so any idea why it's gone like that oh, so just think about the other one the other one was a small rectangle 
yeah, that's why. I mean, you could have done, they could have done it with an extrusion, actually. And that's how I'd do it, just as an extrusion from the side. The sweeps work as well. And the problem is that the top of this profile is still associated with the top of the window opening, and it needs to be associated with my transom head. So I've got to go to uh, probably the left elevation. Uh, so I you know the right elevation again. So to see that. And then uh, select profile, edit profile, and now I can just get this line, drag it down onto the reference plane I made, and I'll get that message again, remove constraint, because I'm unlocking it essentially from the bit at the top. And now I can padlock again to this reference plane that I've made. Now. I may have gotten the gizmo instead, and this is called a gizmo. Um, so I'm just going to drag it away, remove constraints again, just to show you a maybe more um, foolproof way of lining it up with something using the align tool. That way I can choose this reference plane. And you can see there, notice the name transoms coming up there, so I know it's the one I've made. And then again, choose the line, lock it, and that way I can be sure it's tied to the right thing. The dragging method usually works, but with something like this, it's really better to be safe than sorry. And so here, while I'm at it, I can check these sizes, 45 by 36. Yeah, okay, that's what they've done, so I'll do it again. Uh, and so, to the 3D view, again, just to check what's happening there, that's better. So there's the piece I've just modified. So I want to do the same thing again in the part above, so back to the back, elevation, back to create, sweep, I'm not going to save it because I haven't given it a new name, and then sketch path, pick lines, locks on, so I'll pick my two side reference planes, my transom, and my head, trim, Okay, now notice how the gizmo here has gone to one side. So that's because it was the first edge I happened to make. Now, you can move it afterwards just by clicking on it and then dragging. So I want that to be in the same position as it is in the other family. Oh, in the other solid, I mean. So don't be afraid to move the gizmos around to a view that suits you better. Uh, and so then again, tick to finish. And now I can go to Edit Profile. It'll tell me that this view is no good. So I have to go to the other elevation. Um, right, in this case, is, is the better one. Uh, because I can see there's my uh, piece that I want to copy. And so, let's see, with uh, the Line tool, I'll just for draw from the gizmo across, down, and then back. And just to check that measurement, 45 by 36, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, we, yeah, 45. Okay. So, yet another way of drawing things is to dimension them afterwards. So, from the uh, dimensions, once I select those lines, I can change those. Okay, so then again, uh, I can lock those dimensions now. Tick to finish, tick to finish again, and uh, what did I do wrong there? So this one's further across. So the ah uh, oh, okay, so the profile must be aligned on the left as well. Not a problem. Select profile, edit profile, and yeah, so it's not on the gizmo; it's on the um, reveal there. And so again, I can use a line, check this one, bring it across, lock, and then it's brought that should have brought that 45 across, so that they should line up now. So tick to finish, and tick to finish again, and 
Why is that not right? Okay, this. Anyhow, I'll just do it by uh, lining it up. The wrong way around, maybe. Yeah. Oh no, so here that's still dimensioning from the gizmo. That's what it is. Okay, so uh, so this needs to come across to the uh, sash there, and then needs to be changed. That's probably been unlocked. Yeah, automatically it has. Now I can go back to 45. There we go. Yeah, all those little things. There we go. All right. So then, um, might seem like a lot of work, but uh, this is really where you have to do most of the setup with those initial pieces. The rest of them then can follow these. So I've still got to add in the glass, but that's going to follow what I've already made. So it won't be as much work. All right, so I'm going to select that mullion, and I can stretch it now using the arrow to line up. Notice how it's highlighting the inside face of that, uh, of that frame, or that's really the head. So if I release it there, ah, let's try again. Sorry, stretching it up. Ah, it doesn't want to do it, so I'll just try and stretch it a little way. And here we go, that's what I want to see. Remove constraints. And let's see how it's been made. I'm not sure even how this extrusion's been done. Ah, it's been done like this. Okay, so stretching it in that direction won't always work. Not a problem. I can go to my let's see, do it in the same view, back elevation and then with a line, choose the edge here uh, on the base and then that edge lock it, tick to finish 3D view, so that now follows the, uh, the window height again, I probably would skip this if I was making it myself but it doesn't hurt to flex it again so the height is all I really need to check there uh, let's try 1500 Right, it's moving. 2,500. Oh, sorry. Uh, 3,500. Yep, that's working. Uh, then, okay, a little thing that is still useful. Uh, you can set the categories. So here, you can see this little piece here in properties is set to be a reveal. So I'll do the same with the one I've made. So if you're not sure, subcategories are kind of the equivalent of layers, AutoCAD layers, so Revit does have them, it's just that it does most of the work for you, so you often don't have to think about it, but when you're making your own family, you of course have to think about all these things, so that one's frame mullion, and this one, again, can be frame mullion. Okay, so nearly there, uh, the uh, mullion there, as well, it should be frame mullion, not frame sash. And notice this little piece that goes over the, uh, the other part of the frame there. I'm going to use join and choose that and the other one, and you can see that makes a nice clean join. You can do that below as well. That's just good practice, it makes your families much neater. And notice it's done at the top as well. And then the glass, finally. So in the placement, so no, I could do it again in the back, just because that's where I've done everything else. I'll make a new extrusion. And then with um, the subcategory there, I'll just make sure it's on glass. The material is already on glass clear windows. So then I'm just going to use pick lines, turn lock on, and pick the edges that I've already got here. So how easy is that? Once you've done all that work, making the parameters, you should just get objects to build up in a hierarchy following those. Pick to finish, and I'll check the um, right view. So you can see there the depth is already pretty good actually, but to make it better, I'm going to just stretch using the uh, arrow there onto the center line, which is this reference plane here. 
It's actually called W1, which is the wall, but that's, that's basically the centre. And then I'm going to select this glass and we'll see... Oh, so if I go to thin lines, let's have a look. I'll just measure that rather than finding the property. Oh, sorry, this one. Six mil. Right, so they're pedantic. They've done it the size glass really is, not the size it's often drawn at. That's not a bad thing. Uh, so to set that as a parameter for something like an extrusion and to have it in the height, we've got to find a way of tying that to the, uh, the depth here. So you can see there it's got an extrusion start and end. And the start is, is a minus number. So what that means is I'll have to use a, an aligned dimension and dimension from that reference plane to the front of that extrusion. Bring it down. And uh, let's see if they've got a glass thickness. No, there's no glass thickness parameter there. So I'll make my own. Just selecting it. Again, label, add parameter, glass thickness. I'll make it uh, 6 mil. And you can see there, that's the extrusion changing size. So let's go back to back and just repeat the process. So the solid that's there for the glass probably could be copied across now the way I copied the other things, but I just want to show you it again because it's really the most important uh, process. Once you have all the parameters set up, getting things to then follow that. So again, extrusion, pick lines and make sure locks on so I can pick the edges that I know are already following my parameters. And then just tick to finish check the, uh, so the uh, right elevation, drag it so that it's sitting on the right plane and is locked to it, so I'll just click and drag using the arrow there and then zoom in to snap to that reference plane, lock, and now join a dimension, again using that all important reference plane there, there we are, W1, to the front of the glass, which is this one. And notice I can tell because it's got the right name, because I've set the subcategories as I go along. So again, I'll just click to place that new dimension, select it. I don't have to make the glass property again. I've made it already, so I can just choose it there, and the window is done. So there we go. Uh, now, no glazing bars. Nope, so let's ditch those. I hate glazing bars. Glazing bars, ugly as anything. I know people like the Georgian, the Georgian ones these days, but otherwise they're just the most ugly thing generally. So, sorry there. Uh, the red ones are the sash. Yeah, they just use different colours for the different categories, so they won't come up. Uh, I don't think you can check the shaded view to see the materials. Oh yeah, so they've got, yeah, just a red outline in this file. So if you look in object styles, it'll have, uh, here we go, the frame stash is, is red there. It shouldn't be in the project because it'll have a different colour there. And you can, you can change it if you want to, if it's not right anyway. So, uh, oh okay, so then, of course, they've got a couple of different glass materials, so that's Ah, here we go. So this extrusion on the bottom is set to just be um, using the glass material. Here we go. I've got glass clear windows here, which is a slightly different material. So maybe just to finish up, I'll show you how to make an adjustable material parameter. That's often where people start with parameters. And if you haven't seen them before, it's good to see them as well as these dimension parameters I've been doing. Uh, so, at the moment, the glass is set to the glass material no matter what. Do you know how to change a material like that if you have a family that has a material that doesn't come up with it? 
with a property you can change? Yeah, well, if, you, if it doesn't have a parameter, what, what can you do without adding a parameter? Yeah, yeah. So you just open the family up and then change it directly. So like I am now, open the file like I have and then select the object and then over here, choose a new material. And that's actually how you change a lot of materials for families. But because we know that this uh, material is going to be aluminium, um, then we could leave it as aluminium. And then there might be just some pieces, here we go, like the wood here on the inside, that uh, I think are actually aluminium in those windows. So again, you could leave it as, uh, as aluminium, or you can make it adjustable. So here we go, I'll set it to metal aluminium. So that now is basically like the default material. When I load it in, that's what it'll have. But I'll select all the pieces that should be the solid material, probably the aluminium. So I'm just using control to do this. I think that's it. Yeah. Okay, so they're all my pieces. And so then next to the material, there's a button that you probably click on accidentally all the time. Um, and that's the add parameter button, essentially. So if I click there, you can see associate family parameter comes up. And you've got this option to add a parameter. And we can say, right, frame material is our name. Okay. OK, again. Now I'll save the file. I'll save it so you can get to it. So it'd be a good idea if you can have a go at uh, turning this into a single frame, uh, a single uh, double hung, because you'll need one of those as well. And I'll save it into your CAD4 folder. And well, I'll just save it here for now. So double hung, two light, uh, two F, I'll call it, two fixed. That'll do it. Yeah. Oh, well, th that's only in a project. So, well, I'll load this one in just so you can see what I mean. So, if I click load into project now, I've only got one project file open, so it's going to go straight into my file. So, if you haven't placed Windows for a while, remember, Cursor closer to the outside of the building makes them face out. And now I didn't look too much at the 2D um, setup of this window, so in plan it's not going to look great. That's something I'd do separately. But in 3D, it's coming okay. And so if I select this now, let's have a look at the properties. There's not a lot in there except for the sill height. Because remember, that's an instance property which means each window can be different. So, and that makes sense. Each window can have a different seal height. But then if we go to edit type, we'll see all those other parameters. So some of these were here before, some are ones that I've made, like the transom height and the glass thickness. And then the one I might made just then up above, the frame material. So all of those are adjustable. But notice the glass material isn't adjustable because I didn't make a parameter for that. Let's say I did want to change the glass, then I'd have to go and select the family, edit family, and then select each piece of glass manually, clicking on them. I'll just, well, I'll just get the one. And then you can see over here, we can change that glass material to something else. And if you know that there's a good chance of you changing the glass again, you could you know, tie a parameter to it, and then it's always adjustable. So, I know it can at first seem a bit complicated, but really it's just a lot of repetition and it's probably more difficult um, in, in terms of the way you think about it when you're trying to work with someone else's family than when you make one your own, on your own from scratch. But when you make one on your own from scratch, there's a lot of setup. And so not just uh, the 3D things I've been looking at, but also the 2D, which I haven't really talked to you much about. But uh, just be aware that the 2D line work is a separate thing that you need to um, to put into the family. Um, 
That's right, exactly, exactly. So it's really important to give it a new name, that's right, exactly. Yep. And uh, so then, uh, you know, if you make your own folder for your own library parts, that's a really good idea and start building up your own folders of categories of the different families. And so I've got dozens or well, hundreds of these things. Uh, and uh, then uh, the final thing I'll just mention about families is the annotation tab. So if you've been looking at this in the project file, you'd know you've got things like detail lines, and uh, they're great for doing 2D line work. If you haven't looked at them, have a look at them. It might clear up a lot of things in Revit for you. But in families, you don't have them. You've got symbolic lines, which are kind of the same, but also a little bit different. That's why they have a different name. Uh, I won't do too much with them, but if you have a look at those um, tutorials I showed you, they've got plenty of examples using symbolic lines. So if you've wondered how maybe door swings are done, the arc in a door swing, you do with a symbolic line because you don't want to see that in 3D. Alrighty, so uh, that's all I'll do with um, that family. And so I'll just close all these windows. And so maybe actually just to finish up in the project file, like I showed you before, we've got the reference planes that I've used to uh, start setting out the openings. So I'll just drag this window across. Okay, not too bad. It's a little bit out, not too bad. And so, just because of the, the sort of program Revit is, it's not really a big deal if you just rough things in. So here I'm just going to copy these across. Turn multiple on if you want to do lots of copying and it keeps going. Uh, so I can just quickly get these. So I'm using the arrows here to nudge things across, really rough. Uh, and then you can make it accurate later. It's not like AutoCAD where you've got to draw it perfectly from the beginning. So we might know that these windows have to be uh, equally spaced. Well, it looks like they are on the elevations, on the, uh, well, the photos anyway. So, yeah, let's bring them back. So it probably is a really good idea to set up some reference planes like I have and then really work out the spacings of those and uh, do it a bit better than I've got at the moment. But you can easily adjust these things. So I'll just quickly show you with the uh, dimension there. You've got centre lines built into families like the window families. There we are. So let's see what equals will do there. Not too bad. Can't be like that because the fireplace obviously is too close to that window. But possibly if this window comes across, I'll have to have a look at it, or this one does. Let's look at the photo there. I think that's actually where the photo's been taken from. A uh, couple back. Oh, there we are. So we can work out that spacing and then going across. Oh, no, well, they're not even, okay? So that's silly of me. But, uh, but again, you could do the same equivalent thing with reference planes. And all I'm trying to show you there is how easy it is to adjust that spacing. And also, uh, so I'll unconstrain that, also the size of the window. So like I showed you before, we've got a property now for that width and, and the height as well. And then even the sill height. So, you know, you can make a family like this pretty early before you even know the exact positioning of the windows and, uh, and just fine tune that as you go. Once you've got it right on one level, won't take you long, I'm sure you all know, to copy from one level to another. Copy to clipboard is the best way, and then paste a line to selected levels. And we'll go to uh, level one, building B. That easy. And you know, before you know it, it'll start looking like a real building with those openings in there. Uh, and so I'd be focusing on the doors and the windows over the next week if you can. And then don't forget the main elements, hopefully, that you've been looking at. Walls, floors, ceilings. Last week I looked at the ramp, if you weren't here. So I've got that ramp put in, and you'd want to do the same on the, on the lower level. 
and the stairs as well. Even if you don't get the stairs working perfectly, at least have a go at them. Uh, and that way you'll have enough for interior views. So maybe I know I've been going on, but I'll just do one last thing. So remember the interior views are the main focus of this project. I know it's tempting to get everything perfect, but uh, the whole point of the modelling is to get interior perspectives. And if you've been down that corridor before, you'd probably realise it's already starting to look like like that, or like it really is. And as we start going in there now, with some windows, starting to look, yeah, no, needs, needs a lot more work. The skirtings definitely should be there, but uh, anyway, we're starting to get towards what you'd need as a minimum to get some perspectives, interior perspectives and they're more important than uh, the other drawings where you'll see the roof. So the roof really is only for the section. But uh, again, otherwise the uh, interior views are the, uh, the main focus and this subject's really meant to be all about 3D uh, rendering and, uh, and things associated with that, so materials and lighting. And uh, so again, even though you may not have a whole lot of modelling done up to this point. Next week I've got to start just going through a little bit on materials and then got to do lighting the following week so you can at least start to get those things set up.